Welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. It's time to wake up and shine on. Hello, welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. I'm Shannon Shine. Hi guys, I am CeeLo Mom. As always, we are super excited that you are still listening to us. Mm -hmm. The last few episodes maybe sounded interesting because we had accidentally recorded using the built-in mic rather than our nice professional studio mics. Shannon was in charge. I'll take I'll take the responsibility. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> this is why I am the designer, you are the producer. Yeah. You Usually I handle like things. the electronic um, <laughs> technology things. I make things look pretty. I try. <laughs> but you know, I sometimes I I give you, you know, an opportunity. I, I want you to know that I trust you. I'm just glad that we checked it out and hopefully now we sound great and we're just yep. grateful that you're still listening. Thank you. Thank you. There was music in the background because sometimes we do, like we have a, a radio station and it's just when we are discussing like these mics, you probably can't pick it up right now, but it's just nice to have that good uh, music in the background. Yeah. So if you do like to listen to music and podcasts, you can check out Bring Me to Life Radio mm -hmm. um, because what we are here is a community yes. supporting creativity yep. and uh, expression. Oh, the expression, the awakening, just feeling your true potential mm. and highest joy. Mm -hmm. So we like to promote musicians and artists. Yep. And you can check out more of the musician portion on Bring Me to Life Radio. Yeah, just you gotta search Bring Me to Life Radio and whatever wherever you find podcasts at basically. Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio. You can check out our fresh website. It's pretty sweet. Yes. Bring me to life dot com. Where we have so much awakening content. Because we're trying to build a community. And we talked about community in an earlier podcast. Yep. And earlier, we were also listening to the last podcast. And we left off at mm -hmm. hate can't drive out hate. Only love can do that. Mm -hmm. and yeah, powerful. Yeah. So why we show up here with the, the Bring Me to Life anything is because we, we want to share... Uh, some light we want to share some love but we also just want to create a safe space for other people to talk about things and mm -hmm. to do that it involves sharing our experiences on a deep spiritual level yeah. and a lot of us have had trauma from that trauma from talking about our experiences as we awakened mm -hmm. and trauma from how our families and friends respond to that mm. definitely Definitely. Some, uh, my, okay. So some of my family members, when I first started doing my, my journey, mm -hmm. literally thought I was following the path of the devil. And that, that's crazy to me. I mean, you are the furthest from a devil worshiper. I mean, there's nothing wrong with right. anybody's, I mean, actually that's an interesting point of view. I just read a post online from a friend mm -hmm. who she she studies the religious uh, like the religion of lucifer mm -hmm. and things like that and she thanked yeah. lucifer mm. for her ability to to paint again and things Dude, like that it's it's very interesting that you say that because when i came back in like 2013 from from my lost season trip i was in the shower and i don't know if i've ever told you this but I was in the shower and then all of a sudden I just had this thought like, you are Lucifer. You well, are the fallen angel that came to earth to help humanity experience duality. And everybody hates you for it because they're like, well, now I'm like experiencing all this poopiness. So I had to go through like um, almost like a dark night of the soul after hearing that. And it was pretty intense because then I kind of like had a whole different perspective on Lucifer. Like he could, he could, he's like an angel that God made do that because he could handle the one he could handle people hating him for creating this kind of physical separate illusion. Hmm. That's so interesting to me. I feel like there's been a lot of different people that have different connections to that Lucifer term too. And it's so scary. Mm, it's almost and, like they, 
when we were talking about the symbols uh, and how they've manipulated symbols. I like how we can't go an episode without talking about the ominous they because it's like such a thing that we feel this as a collective. So I'm starting to realize that when we say they, it just means that like the collective has programmed this. Mm. They are we and we are all one, but still from our perspective now, they is can be different than us, but they are just have a whole different perspective on life, Mm -hmm. a whole different mission, Mm -hmm. a whole different role for this play. Mm hmm. And they're executing it pretty pretty spot on. I mean, yeah, on this podcast, we do like to talk about how symbols and specific words have been really stripped of their power and made to Definitely. be like a negative thing. Definitely. Like, I mean, the Satanic Bible, it's like a collection of essays and observations and rituals um, published by a specific group. And honestly, that's what most religious books are, is just a book of essays. Like, even the Bible, it's a book of essays from different prophets that's, that speak a certain path. Mm. I, I'm okay with people learning and exploring religion and spirituality, as long as it doesn't cause harm to others. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's what's most important is for us all to... Respect each other. Yeah, respect each other, respect the path of of whoever, as long as it's bringing them joy. Mm-hmm. So if that goes back to our quote is, hate can't drive out hate. Only love can do that. So mm. we can't project our experiences on others mm. because then we're, we're making it's Almost triggers. like limiting, limiting uh, the omnipotent perspective of the universe definitely like it's it's so important to not put yourself in a box and to to continue to keep learning Mm -hmm. it goes back to the episode of i love learning yeah (laughs) so the last two episodes were the ones that we accidentally recorded with the built-in and it does have music in the background so maybe some people weren't able to listen to that because you, for example, are one people, one person who has a hard time if like there's music in the background of somebody's talk. It's hard for you to pay attention to. Sometimes. I like to record it. I like to listen to music and podcasts at the same time, but it's kind of like a thing, a choice I have to make. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So um, for those who didn't see hear that episode, you Shannon loves to learn. She's always learning. And it's one thing I love about you. Thanks. So you love to learn. You love to learn too. I do. Yeah i I have a, an open mind and an open heart, and it's. I would say that's almost like one of the most attractive traits to me in someone is just being open minded. Yeah, I think it's really important for people to have their own experience, and. Again, that goes to making sure you're not projecting. And we can only speak from our own perspective, Mm -hmm. which is something we talked about in the narcissism episode, if you didn't get to listen to that. And it talks about how we can only teach others from our own experience. How to treat us. Yeah, how to treat us. That's one thing you say a lot. Yeah, well, that's at least a Nichols quote is Mm. teach others how to treat you. Because it's important. Because if somebody doesn't know that you don't like to be touched or you don't like to talk about a certain topic or anything like that like maybe you're a recovering addict and Mm -hmm. it's a trigger for you to to go to certain places Uh, so people don't know that about you i um earlier today actually we were driving around town like going to the bank and stuff and you got really upset really frustrated um about something like not very significant and instead of like getting frustrated with you and upset and yelling i like took a breath and i was like okay shannon all you need to do right now is just breathe and relax and everything will be okay. And you did. And I was like, oh, that's kind of like an example of teaching somebody how to treat you. Like if I was super upset and angry and like feeling all these crazy emotions, I would want you to be like, it's okay. Just breathe and everything's going to be fine. Well, it goes to the golden rule too. Like teach others how to treat you, but also like treat others how you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's that's like the golden rule. I don't listen to many rules in life. Um, mm-hmm. I am. I, I mean, I do. I like. <laughs> I like to make my own rules. Definitely. Um, Who doesn't? But I like 
the bigger rules like that like mm-hmm. t- treat others like how you yeah. want to be treated There's i like just a, i think i feel almost like it's like a, a law of nature if mm-hmm. if you want to have the best experience and these laws will help you to have that kind of experience definitely and i mean and i like the four agreements too oh yeah they're, they're, they're pretty great. solid um yes. let's go through them because last time i i tried to bring it up and we didn't get through them all so oh yeah so the four agreements is one don't make assumptions so yes treat others how you want to be treated and mm. oh. especially like if you assume somebody is upset with you or assume something about somebody without knowing like their feelings right that's, like that's, if somebody's that's good. really sad somebody might like a hug but don't assume that they want to be hugged because they, they, they might be somebody who feels right. smothered yes so don't make assumptions if right. and then that brings us to the next one i do like saying it makes an ass out of you and me i've heard a lot of people say it and right. i want to repeat it because you don't want to assume it's true yeah but okay so let's assume one person really wants to be cuddled the other person feels smothered so the person that feels cuddled needs to remember the next rule, which is don't take things don't t- personal. Take, yeah, don't take things personally don't take things because personal. the person such a big one. I'm yeah. fucking learning that all the time though because it has nothing to do with the person that wants to to give the cuddles. Mm-hmm. So this and this goes back to like consent mm. and discussion and being mm. open and able to yes. communicate. Yes, when something like that comes up and it triggers someone. Triggers. it can be hard but i think that is like a key that's like almost like a key to, if you can communicate about that feeling i almost feel like that's opening up a door to a whole discussion that you'll learn something about someone and you'll become much more close because you're able to communicate it from a place hopefully of loving compassion Mm-hmm. Because that's how I would want somebody to approach me if I accidentally triggered them. Right. And I think it's important to be able to communicate and explain why you do things the way you do. Because one, that means you understand the action that you've, you're have you making a conscious understanding of this is why I do it. And you're willing to communicate it with a person so that they understand. So like if the person that feels smothered feels smothered, they need to communicate why they feel smothered. So the person that... Yeah, it was feeling like they mm-hmm. are unwanted or rejected because they're just trying to help. Mm-hmm. This goes a lot with friends too. Like some friends really want to talk, and other friends mm-hmm. just want to work it out in their heads. Yeah, and then that friend gets. And this is usually me. I'm usually the friend that's like, "Well, why don't they want to talk to me?" Because, yeah, like yeah. you said, I chase you around, and I'm like, "Talk <laughs> to me. Tell me what's wrong." Yeah, I'm definitely the kind that like, works it out in their mind before like yeah even introducing it to somebody else. Right, and I explain that if I try to work it out in my mind too much you that overthink I, it. I overthink it and then mm-hmm. i start getting really anxious and it yeah. gives me an anxiety attack where mm-hmm. if i just communicate what the feeling i'm having while i'm having mm-hmm. it there's no anxiety yeah. it's like i work through it in the moment mm-hmm. but you know so that you, about me now too yeah, i know that about you and it's been a process do you think that as whoever the person whoever's getting triggered or say like i'm i make a move and you are not feeling it you're like in your trauma right now you're processing trauma or something and it triggers you should you be the one to say something to me or should i be the one to say something to you about it if you make the move say i would make the move and you blocked me because you just weren't some trauma and and so and especially being a Scorpio, like I'm over analytical to begin with. So say I like start to overthink it, like maybe she thinks I'm not good enough or so wh- who do you think should be the first to bring it up to begin a, a loving, compassionate conversation? Um, I think it really depends on how far each person is working with the trauma. Um being somebody who has healed or I shouldn't even say healed in the process of healing a lot yeah. of trauma, the understanding always, of the traumatic always, world. Always yeah. Healing. Like I'll never be healed from it. Like it's, right. an, it's an ongoing process. Yes. It's my experience. Definitely. Um, once we become aware of other people's feelings and especially if you're listening to this now, you'll be more aware to just hold space. And if mm-hmm. somebody pulls away, it, it it goes back to not taking it personal. Whoever cannot take it personal enough to be compassionate and hold space. Like, can mm. you be the bigger person? That's where I think that phrase comes mm. in. It's not like, 
trying to get you to stand down. It's saying, can you be a big enough person to find a way to communicate this clearly? Not stand yeah. down and be the bigger person takes, and walk away. It just takes one person to to open it up. I think that's a phrase that gets pushed around in, the wrong, in a negative What's way, that? too. Um, can you be the bigger person? Mm-hmm. I I was told that a lot growing up. Can you be the bigger person? Because I I have a lot of opinions. Mm-hmm. And before I understood to not take things personally, I took things personally a lot. And my my people around me, they, whoever, would always be like, just be the bigger person. Mm-hmm. Because they also know that I have a big heart. Yeah. Um, I am a loyal person. I'm a loyal friend. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not afraid of conflict, but I don't enjoy it like yeah. some people do. Definitely. And they would say, can you be the bigger person? And I was always the one trying to get my friends to be friends again mm-hmm. after silly breakups. And it was like, almost whatever. like saying the bigger person is almost like saying the more mature person. Can or, you be the one that's willing to talk yeah. about it? OK, so I pulled away from you and maybe I don't know why yet. Just hypothetically, like even if you, somebody that, can't talk about it, just saying like, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I really love you, but I'm. Dealing with stuff. You can feel your like instead of okay. So I understand how to process this now. It took me a second to understand your question. So instead of taking it personally, so yeah, I think it would be the person that gets rejected might be the most afraid to not say anything. But if you most most afraid to say something, you right? And because if you're getting rejected, then usually you're like, oh, right. You don't want to like. You don't want to. But the person Push that's it yeah, someone. the person that's rejecting you though, the person that's rejecting you likely has a reason yeah. for putting that boundary up, yeah. and maybe they're afraid to say it mm-hmm. on a communicative level. Yeah. So maybe it is the person that gets rejected's job to be that bigger person. This is just mm. a hypothetical situation. Oh, um, okay. to just like take a deep breath and be like, "Oh, I'm sorry if I crossed a boundary. Mm. I'm a kind of person that I like a hug if I think." I can make you feel better. So even do you think if someone would say, I'm sorry, like if they tried and you just weren't feeling it, you rejected them and then you said, I'm sorry. Even if those two words, would that like help you to like maybe say why or even just express that you may be sorry too? I think it's important to acknowledge you've crossed someone's boundaries. I'm sorry I crossed your boundaries. Just saying I'm sorry Mm. might not be good enough because... How often do we say I'm sorry so yeah. quick and then it's just like you don't want to offend them. So you just real quickly say I'm sorry and then you just mm-hmm. that's it. But if you say I'm sorry, I understand I crossed a boundary or oh, I'm sorry, did I cross a boundary? Then you're opening it up for discussion. Mm-hmm. You're not just saying I'm sorry because I'm sorry can almost be a really? gaslighting situation, too, because if you say I'm sorry a lot, how many people are almost just traumatized into saying I'm sorry from being a kid. I remember growing up with friends where they said, I'm sorry for everything. I feel like I've went through phases of that and it becomes almost a manipulation tactic, Mm -hmm. which is part of gaslighting and making somebody question their own sanity. Oh, they said, I'm sorry. Was I the one that was being like, it starts making everybody overthink. So just talk about your feelings, people. Sorry. (laughs) See, (laughs) Mm -hmm. see, Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I wasn't really offending you, but I felt the need to say sorry. Yeah. I, just me personally, like, you know, it's taken me a while to get to a place where I can communicate. And sometimes still, it takes me a second. So, you know, it is what it is. I, I wish everybody the best in, in their life and, and learning from these situations. Because it can be a lot sometimes. I just want to send everybody who is listening a lot of love and compassion right now. Definitely love to all the angles at the beginning of this podcast. You started talking about how people saw you as Lucifer. Mm. No, but, people did not see me as Lucifer. Okay. It was just um, a thought that came into my mind. And it's kind of funny because my brother was saying, you know, like path of the devil, but I don't think Lucifer is what people see as the devil, I think he was just an angel that had to play a part in creating duality. And unfortunately for Christianity and the Bible, 
King James had to come in and manipulate some of the texts. Mm -hmm. He made his own version. So I want to tell people that I really, I love, I love religion, actually. I do. I love a lot of the religions. And Christianity is something that I've got a really special connection with. And Jesus is Yeshua, somebody I have like a very strong connection, many crazy moments with him. But my problem arises when I looked into it and and did some research on the king and apparently King James, the like the most popular version of the Bible, went through when he became king and took hold of the church, he required every single person to use his version. And if you look at him as a person, he was a terrible person. He was very, like, ego-y. He wanted to be in charge of everything. So he really took that kind of religion in England and turned it into a way to control people. Mm. And I'm not saying like that version is is wrong or bad or anything, but King James was not a good person. So I don't trust his version of the Bible. I trust my intuition and I'll read the stories and if my in- intuition doesn't align with with what I'm reading, then maybe I think, you know, maybe that's one of his like ways of controlling people and their spirituality mm. it's definitely a manipulation tactic and um that's something again we were touching on at the beginning of the podcast was how these different religions and putting things in boxes and putting this one way of thought into everyone's mind that we all think the same way mm-hmm. is is scary because we're all having such different experiences mm-hmm. like in so there's like there's all different kinds of religions too yeah. so I'm in a town with a lot of old cool, old school Christians, yes. old school Catholics, mm-hmm. and I'm also seeing more and more like Mormonism and things like that in the area too. And, mm, and yeah, they're Mennonites, maybe. maybe, maybe that's, I sure. think that's what I'm. It's hard to tell because they don't communicate mm-hmm. much with us as the outside world. Yeah. And then we're also really close to a lot of the Amish and things like that. We're in what's called Amish country, mm-hmm. and just seeing all these different perspectives, it just makes me wonder why we've closed off our community in such a way um again we we talk about how sometimes we're in this like smaller valley it's almost like being in a bubble because Mm -hmm. though they're all segregated into their own i mean there's a there's a decent sized jewish community too um in the area Mm -hmm. um but we don't we don't have a lot of the western philosophies of like um, like Hinduism yeah. and things like that. That's mm-hmm. very rare. You in have to go hometown. out of this area, to, like an hour at least, probably to get to one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now you're from a different area, yeah. so up in Michigan, where mm-hmm. you're from, there's there's people shouting Hare Krishna all mm-hmm. over. Oh yeah. And like there's dancing. In and Detroit, like, they actually have a temple that I've gone to a few times and had food with them and danced with them. It's actually kind of you know just it's a literal mansion like you see in movies Mm -hmm. with all these huge dining rooms and it's crazy i mean most most religious groups have a nice temple yeah that's one thing i respect about religious entities Mm -hmm. is the temple Mm -hmm. um but one thing i love about the spiritual community is our body is our temple so we begin to honor ourselves in a different way like that's something Mm -hmm. i don't feel like a lot of religions touch on like they should. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it should be a bigger thing, especially in like the, the newer versions of like Christianity and thing like there's potlucks and stuff, but there's not like, and this is again, just from my perspective here, like I'm sure people will message me and tell me all about their beautiful churches adventures, because anytime I bring up a church, somebody gets upset and then, I hear about it, but you know what? I go to churches all the time. I love attending different spiritual community services, different things like that. Actually, fun fact, fun fact, people that think that CeeLo and I hate church for some reason, 
we went to a church today and we taught kids meditation there. We did. We went to a Fun church fact. and taught kids meditation and it was amazing. They loved it, actually. Yeah. I, I love going to open-minded churches. Mm. Um, yeah. For a while, that was like a thing we did. We yeah. just went to different churches to see how open-minded they were. Yeah. It's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> it's cool because, um, you know, I like to be different and dress different and have different kind of hair and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting to go to churches and see how they, they treat me because that gives me an idea of their character because, you know, mm -hmm. treating me like a stranger, not knowing who I am. I'm a very loving, like light spiritual person mm -hmm. when you get to know me. Definitely. Always. And, yeah. So it just like, I think it's kind of cool because I get to really blow people's minds when they meet me because they see me, they see someone else and then they meet me. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. Well, and people make assumptions too, because I know for a long time when people would know that I went to like music festivals or transformational festivals and things too. Did we get through the four agreements? No, we're getting back to this. Okay. I just want to make sure down. we, because last time we brought it up in one of the episodes and I very specifically remember not being able to get through them. Well, just so you know, the four agreements are don't make assumptions. Mm. Don't take things personally. Yeah. Always, do your, Always best do your best and be impeccable with your yeah. word. Yeah. So that's the four agreements. It's a book. Go look it up. Um, back to what I was saying is I remember that people would make assumptions. And that's mm -hmm. one of the four agreements is don't make assumptions about people because, oh, if you think that they're, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example, but I'm on the spot. But I'm just going to go back to the example I was on. Like people used to think that because I said I went to music festivals, that that meant that I was like I was addicted to drugs, that I was, I don't know, a bad influence, that I was out raving all the time. If anyone that knows me that when I go to festivals, I'm like the mom at the festival that's like, okay, guys, let's make yep. sure we get to bed on time. Let's make sure everyone's fed. Yep. Everyone's got clothes. <laughs> like mm -hmm. just because you go to a music festival or something like that doesn't mean that you're out there causing a ruckus. Like that's an assumption for people like music festivals and music transformation, mm -hmm. art, things that's, like that. That's like some people's churches. That was church for me. So when... Yeah. So when God and I had it out in the Christianity way, I used to be a really big Christian in a way. Like I went to church every weekend. I prayed every night. I I went when the rest of my family didn't. And then I went through a phase where I, I felt like I wasn't being heard by God. Mm -hmm. I felt like God wasn't listening to me. I was praying every night to this God and so many bad things were happening around me. I was losing all the people in my life left and right. I was losing my mom and my dad and my grandma. My friends were doing things that I didn't understand. And like in Christianity, I was taught that if I prayed and I was a good person, that everything around me was going to be all right. I just had to pray, go to church. And I needed to, I made sure I, I remember I would get an allowance and I would I would make sure I could go to the movies with my friends. I'd make sure I could do things, but I would save all of the change and like I would save portions of it so I could make sure I'd give it on to church on Sunday mm -hmm. because I I didn't want to have to ask my grandma for money to put in the plate. And my grandma didn't really go to church at the time, so I don't yeah. think she knew, but I didn't want to be the only person at church not putting something in there because uh -huh. I thought that that's what made me a good person Yeah, was being able to put. So I would save mm -hmm. change and stuff and I would put it in the plate, the collection plate. Yeah. And you know, I, I left church for a while and I started going back to these other churches and I'd find myself still doing that. It was like my presence wasn't enough. It was like I had to give more mm. of me. I had to give my money I had to give my time. And you know what mm. you do, I would but say in a different way. Some, some churches don't make that a big deal, and it's like chill. But some churches make it such a big deal. Well, you just look around, and I was a child. No one ever told me I had to put money in. That's one mm -hmm. thing that I was grateful for because I wasn't old enough for people to expect that. Yeah. But just thinking back on that trauma, like it's something I've just been recently uncovering about money too, like my, my the way I look at money is I feel like I feel guilty if I'm not giving a certain amount like away. Mm -hmm. And I, I do that with my time, my offerings, my art, things yeah. like that. I felt guilty for a long time charging for my services mm -hmm. because I, and I've had to flip that switch since I've gotten out of a super 
religious and a more spiritual perspective, people think that that's all like woo woo, but I really have been able to flip my perspective on abundance. And I realized that God, the universe, the energy that creates us here, it doesn't want us to have to rely on money in that way. I think that's part of the whole King James thing. Like King James and like, his royalty mm. needed money mm-hmm. and the, the yeah kings that could have been a huge thing it. because you know he's like you got to do this and one thing he, that jesus he literally took over religion like he, so yeah. much well one thing jesus wanted us to realize is he could turn water into wine he could he could make food for all of his people people were suffering out there yeah his people that were listening to him, they weren't people in a church. They were people that were suffering and needed to realize how to live. And he gave them purpose. Mm-hmm. He gave them hope. Yeah. And I understand that a lot of people go to churches when they need hope. And I've been there. And I saw my whole family kind of flip the switch when my grandma got sick and they all started going to church. None of them were ever super religious before. I was the only one. And I would take my little brother with me because... God love my brother. He'll follow me anywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I love him. He made, sh- and you know what? He kept me grounded. Cause at one point he was like, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I don't like going. Why do we have, why I don't we have know to go? Nobody why we have going. to go. And then I started, and not only was I going, but some of them hated me there. Like most churches, people love their community. Yeah. I was the person oh, who questioned yes, everything. Yeah, questions. Why were the dinosaurs? Where were this? Why can't, why did he take my mom? And then the preachers are like, well, blah, blah, blah. And they didn't really have a whole lot of reason. And they would mm. shut down and they when, would tell me to just pray. Yeah. And I just prayed a lot, man. Uh, when, uh, earlier when we were doing the meditation at the class, um, one, like one of the girls reminded me of you because she kept raising her hand and asking questions. Oh man, she was my favorite. And uh, she was so. But cute. they were good questions. So it's like we get to be those people who, if you were younger and you were trying to ask all these questions, we were so open to them and we would have like answered them. Yeah, and you know what's cool? If I'm not mistaken, I think that little girl is in a space where she's not allowed to do yoga or, or meditate. So the fact that we were able to be there for her oh, wow. just changed her world. Wow. Yeah, she. She came up after and like really was like asking about my singing bowl. Mm-hmm. She was asking about it. She was like, it's so cool. Yeah. She was also one of the only ones who said she had to pray before bed and all those things too. And she was just so curious about the world. Mm-hmm. And I'm so grateful for that that community, that school, that church for allowing us in their mm-hmm. space. Yeah. Like, see, I'm not a church hater. I love mm-hmm. going to church. Religious yeah. communities. I love getting to experience church from a different point of view mm-hmm. because I want to see it change my mind. I want to see it not be this thing that I was indoctrinated to think it was and mm-hmm. then realized wasn't serving me. Yeah. Like, let's make churches fun again. Yeah. Let's make churches love again. Some, I'm sure some of those kids will remember that for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to remember it for a long time. It opened my heart. I got to ohm with those kids. Mm-hmm. They, we got to they, make, they did a good one at the end. Oh, man. I was like, let's do a loud ohm, guys. And they ohmed their hearts yeah. out for me. It was yeah. so cute. Uh-huh. We taught them some mudras. We asked them about confidence. One of them's definition of confidence was it makes you strong. Mm-hmm. I liked that. Yeah, that's it, good. You know what adults think confidence is? Hmm. Being sexy, mm. being in control. Yeah. I love that the kids just think it means making you strong. Yeah, that that's makes a me good, so happy. That's a good definition because when you are confident, you do feel strong. Yeah, I want I want my community to feel strong and confident yeah. in who they are. And yeah. I mean, if you love church and you love the Bible as it's written in this moment, then I love you too. Like I'm not a hater. I'm just I'm here to be always doing my best. And to just, I, I mean, I want to see people shine and do their best mm-hmm. with whatever it is that helps them. Some people need a very specific religious outlook to, to do their best, maybe. Mm, you know, who knows? I I like just exploring spirituality, and I, I like that I can go to different temples and churches. and I don't, I don't feel weird there because I feel like I've, I've been through a lot of that, but more than ever, I'm seeing a lot of the people open up their minds, their Mm -hmm. hearts. 
Um, Definitely. And maybe Harry Potter had a big part of that because <gasps> my dad was Harry so Potter. religious and against magic and Harry Potter before he read it. And then he read it and his whole life changed. Dude, Harry Potter was such an open experience. What year did Harry Potter come out? Because I feel like that had mm, to have been like... 1999 maybe. Oh, man. I don't know. I'm going to Google it. When did Harry yeah. Potter come out? Because I feel like it was a shift out. for humanity. It started literally coming out JK every Rowling year on my birthday. Amazing. Is there coming out every year on my birthday? And Daniel Radcliffe and I are the same age. So that was probably pretty cool for you. It was super cool for me because I was like... This is this is basically my movie because it's coming out and you know I'm, it's everybody's movie, but it felt special for me because it came out on my birthday and because Daniel and I are so closely aged. I almost felt like a like watching it over again, mm-hmm. like a deja vu almost. Like I was hanging out with Daniel, asking him questions about... So we're talking about the movie. When the movies came out, it yeah. changed people's lives yeah. more so than the book, you think? Mm-hmm. The first movie came out, you're actually right, November 14th, 2001. So it was really close to your birthday. Wow. Two years, yeah. 2001. Wow. Um, what? Right after the, but the September 11th? The first book? The first book came out in 1997. Dang. Yeah. The Philosopher's Stone was first released... In 1997. So the movie came access. out four years after, but it caught, it almost like she finished the book while the movies were coming out. The series, yeah. She finished the actual series. It took yeah. her a while to get the full series out. Yeah. Especially in the U.S. because it was such a thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny how it takes things longer to catch on in the U.S. and we're supposed to be the land of the free here, but we have some of the most like criticized, censored entertainment and <laughs> access to things. Yeah, definitely. We're so censored over here. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's definitely worse places that are way more censored. Absolutely, but, for sure. <laughs> but <laughs> I know that there's people in other countries that just laugh at us because they're like, wow, oh, Americans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. I laugh at us too, guys. Don't yeah. feel bad. We're laughing mm-hmm. at ourselves over I, here. I envision a world jerks. of where it's just like, it's just Earth, you know, and we can all like, we're all citizens of Earth. There's no borders. There's no stuff like that. Like, you don't need a passport if you are living on Earth. You can just go to the wherever. I need a passport. Yeah, right now we need a passport. But Guys, if there if there could plane. be a world <laughs> without borders, I would be very happy. I think it'd be really cool to get on a plane. Let's make Shannon's dream come true of getting on a plane and going <laughs> somewhere awesome. <laughs> Okay, Shannon's gonna get on a plane soon. Please. Um, yeah, but there's there's turbulence with planes, so I'm excited for you to feel that because the first time I felt I was like, whoa. But the first time you feel some turbulence in there, it's like it's a whole experience. Yeah, I thought maybe it was because I was afraid of heights, but I'm trying to release that fear more and more. Mm-hmm. But I think it was also nine eleven, like I was in a home that was super afraid after that. We're oh, close man. to Somerset and I'm close yeah. to DC mm-hmm. and I'm decently close to New York. New York. You guys were probably closer to New York. Up in mm, Michigan. I don't even know. It might be the same, but I had just recently been to New York or no, I hadn't recently been to New York. Actually, then. I think you guys are probably closer because you're, you're more East than we are in Michigan. Right. So supposedly we felt the Somerset plane here in I remember feeling a shake, but I don't remember. Th- it's like hard and fuzzy because mm-hmm. I have such mixed feels about the 9-11 attacks. Mm-hmm. And that's like a whole different podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, definitely. In this. But Let's do that for another day. But it was so crazy how we were told to feel a specific way mm. about all of it, too. Mm. Like... It's so scary how we were told how to feel. And the reason I brought this up was like 2000, the 2000, 2001, 2002 were such monumental times in humanity, not just the U S in humanity, because Mm. other countries were terrified about what was happening here Mm -hmm. and how we were going to react. Humanity for sure. And that made a lot of, I feel like so many people woke up from that day. Well, here's the thing. I think a lot of families were starting to wake up. Um, but right before that, I think yeah. a lot of people... Because it was like a new century. 
Right. Well, we also had the baby boomers. Y two K. And we had people going. We going back to my music. People that go to music festivals aren't all terrible, with, like drug addicts and stuff. Right. Like, they're transformational events. Like yeah. people learn compassion there. People learn how mm-hmm. to take care of each other. Yeah. And like right before that was happening, the the age, the generation that had grown up in those experiences and stuff were starting to take over and starting to to do the early night or the late nineties were pretty cool. Like there were things happening for people. People were starting to get money built back Man, up. Yeah. So many yeah. cool things were coming and up. And then nine eleven happened and everybody got terrified about everything. Oh yeah. People started wondering if a lot of fear propaganda. Yeah. Wondering if their way of thought was bad. So they started going back to church and praying like, and scaring us. If and, you see some of the the compilations of the of the president and George Bush talking, it's honestly just even his his advisors and and staff. Their all their speeches were just terrorism, terrorism, terrorism. That was the only. Where was the love? Where was the love at? Yeah. Why were we being told to be scared? Like, why were we not coming together and asking why this happened? And instead, we were just putting blame on a specific group of people, and we started a war. We were sending our children out and, and our, never our found family any members. Didn't weapon mass destructions. Well, we it started tearing families apart, dude. They started sending families across yeah. the the world, and we started questioning our sanity. There was a lot of gaslighting going on, mm-hmm. a lot of manipulation, and people just yeah. wanted their families back. So they started praying. And they started giving them, uh, giving people only access to family members at certain times, and people weren't allowed to talk about what was really going on. So we didn't know better. Mm. Man, yeah, wow. So it's been it's been quite a long time, and it's changed our our whole reality for sure. Shifted it quite majorly. Definitely, it was but, scary. Yeah. Ugh. Gives me goosebumps. Right, but it goes back to like our our topic is hate can't drive out hate. Only love. Only love can do that. Right. So I'm beginning to realize that instead of gaslighting and projecting, the only thing we can do is hold space for each other to love. Like that's why I make sure people realize that we're not hating on any religion here. Yeah. We're not we're not hating on anybody here. We're holding space for people to grow and to find their purpose. I think it's just part of our missions, especially because this world is so unbalanced with fear and hate. That's why, you know, we're here to talk about love and compassion. Definitely. And to just be able to communicate your feelings, your experiences with each other. Yeah. Yeah, I've experienced a lot of hate and fear and stuff, and I know what that's like. It's not something I want to keep in my life. You know, I might have whatever for some kind of reason, like we need to sometimes feel fear to run away from danger or, you know, the healthy, the healthy ones. But It's important to have boundaries. Yeah, but... But the world is so unbalanced with so much fear in the news, and that's why I'm excited to just get these get these podcasts out there because a lot of love goes into them, a lot of love goes into our discussions, and i I try to speak from my heart when I can definitely I mean speaking from your heart is really the only way to be, and that goes back to the last the last four agreement. It's to be impeccable with your word, to speak out of love, to take action out of love, to hold space for one another. I mean, yeah, we hold space for each other because it's the thing to do, but it's also out of respect for humans. Like you would want people to hold space for you. Mm -hmm. You would want people to, if they're going to say something to you, believe it and to want to be connected to it Mm -hmm. and to hold space for it like be impeccable with your word and 
show others that you learn from your own mistakes. Like I always say this, I go back and I listen to my own podcast now before I could Mm -hmm. not listen to my own voice. True. Yeah. It took you quite a while. Now I'll listen to my podcast several times because I realize that things I say are things that I want to make sure. Yeah. One, I Uh need to hear, but I want to make sure that I'm learning from myself Mm -hmm. too. Mm Because so many people are like, Shannon, you're such a good teacher. And sometimes I'm like, I feel like I'm just, saying what the universe wants us to hear you're channeling and you're like so i want to learn from what i channeled yeah yeah and but there's also like i've learned from other entities too that it's really important to be impeccable with your word as much as possible i'm i'm a Mm -hmm. firm believer in things change but explain why they change um can i give an example yeah i'm struggling with this whole doreen virtue thing Mm okay because she was such an idol in the spiritual yeah. community. Yeah, I don't I don't want anybody to idolize anybody, especially like some someone like that, you know? It's just kind of like anybody mm-hmm. could happen to anybody. I mean, and we've even had people that we've interviewed that their perspectives have changed yeah. and they've come back and been like, take my podcast down, like yeah. that's not me anymore, and they, yeah. they take a different path, and I respect yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes we just have a life changing experience and that's what we need in our paths. But she was somebody that was really hard for, for me as a spiritual person. Cause I got really into Oracle decks and angels and yeah. she helped create like archetypes and things. And it was really, yeah. it was really she hard. She had so many good things like that she created before all that went down. Yeah. And all of a sudden something just happened. It's like, you don't even see the same person anymore. And that's why I think it's important Whoa. to be well. Whoa, it's important to be peccable with your word. Yeah, and this is me saying that in five years I might have a different perspective, and that's why I uh, want you guys to. I don't think in five impact. years we're going to be like don't 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 be impeccable with your word. Right. I don't think I'm ever going to like. It's important to always be your best. Yeah. It's important to not make exceptions. It's important to not take things personally. Mm-hmm. Like those are things I don't think will ever change. Yeah, maybe that's why they're the you know the four agreements. But if you can follow the four agreements in like all aspects of your life, I think you'll be set. You know, like a lot of my hard feelings come from taking things personally. You know, and making assumptions. Mm-hmm. So, everybody out there who's learning, like I'm, I'm right there with you. It's a process. It definitely is a process. It's a process. When you feel like you've surrendered everything and you've healed it all up, surrender and let it heal more. And the healing process is something that is continuous. It's really important to remember that. Like, If someone says they're fully healed from something, it means that they've just recently probably processed it Mm. and they're ready to tackle on a different situation right now. Yeah. But there's a good chance that it's going to come back up again and it's important to be able to hold space and maybe learn from that with them through that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm grateful that I have a partner who can hold space for me and I can hold space for them. And it's great. Yeah. I'm grateful for a partner that can hold space for me too, but I'm also really great, grateful for a, community Mm. that can do that for me yeah i see so many people growing and holding space and just Mm -hmm. inspiring each other in the bring me to life tribe yeah i'm i'm excited to like get these podcasts rolling and (laughs) and to get like you know some some of our community on to talk with us to open up conversation with others and just have you know i like it I'm excited right. for it. I think that it's been a great season six, like working through and having the unfiltered episodes. Like for a long time, it was just us and then us interviewing people. And then it's kind of going back to its roots. And we want you guys to, to have a good check in with us too. Yeah. And we are looking for people to, to chat with. If you want to get real with some of these topics and, mm-hmm. and talk about things um, we're also always looking for people to help cross promote if you want to help cross promote or if you think that yeah. our audience would benefit from hearing about something you have to offer. We do have mm-hmm. some small, small sponsorship options that helps us keep going and keep going mm-hmm. out there and sharing the love, yeah. sharing the light, sharing the, the helps good us vibes. to open up more space for open discussions and just people to express themselves and their connection to the divine. Yeah. It's it's a way that you can reach 
like-minded people. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I've loved this episode and, and I'm grateful we get to talk about this stuff. Yeah. I'm really grateful too. I'm looking forward to our next episode. I'm really just looking forward to keeping on growing and Mm -hmm. keep on improving. Always keep improving. All right, guys, keep mm, yes. improving. Keep improving. Improve. Keep on grooving. Your community by checking out the Bring Me to Life Challenge on Facebook, where we can talk to you about yeah. all kinds of cool stuff. You can hold space Post for each any other. Any questions, any ideas, like topics? What do you want to hear me and Celia talk about? We'd love Let's hear to it. get to know you all more. I know people are downloading this, I know people are hearing this. Check out the fresh website. I would love to connect with you. Yeah. All right, guys. We love you. Stay awake. Shine on always. See you in the next episode. Namaste. Bye. For many of us, spirituality is just the the quest to find essence or true meaning and to really just connect with a higher consciousness. Connecting with your spirituality is very important in this life. By becoming mindful of all of it, you can realize where you are and if that is leading you to where you want to go. Listen to the little simple things because it's those little simple things that are going to shift you vibrationally in such a way that will prepare you to become very intuitively minded and ready to step forward in the next part of your path. Have you can feel the love that's inside you. It's inside me that connects us. Thanks for shining on with us.